let's suppose that a uniform wooden beam that is 3.3 meters long and has a cross-sectional area of 10 centimeters times 15 centimeters rests on two supports at each end as shown. So we have support system number one, one roof edge, and support system number two, a second roof edge, and the distance is 3.3 meters long. So this entire distance is 3.3 meters long. We place the beam on top of these two roof edges. Now, if the beam has a uniform mass of 30 kilograms and the shear modulus for the wood that the beam is composed of is 5 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared, let's calculate the maximum force the beam can support without shearing. So let's look at our diagram. Let's suppose we have a uniform mass, we take a uniform mass and we place it, we balance it on two beams as shown. And this entire system is resting on the following beam that is a length of 3.3 meters and a mass of 30 kilograms. So, we know that these two beams are both found a distance of 1.1 meters away from each edge. So that means this quantity is 1.1 meters, this quantity is 1.1 meters, and this middle quantity is also 1.1 meters, and the entire distance of the beam is 3.3 meters. So these two beams that point vertically downward both create a force that acts on the beam as shown with the, por uh, with the purple force FB. Now, because the beam has mass, that means the force of gravity acts on the mass at the center of mass directly at the middle at a distance of 1.65 away from one edge. So this is given by m times g. Now each roof edge also exerts a force on the beam that points vertically upward shown in blue. So in the first step, we want to find what the blue force is. In the second step, we'll use the blue force to calculate these purple forces. And then we'll calculate what the maximum mass that the beam can support. In other words, we'll calculate the quantity of this mass. So let's go to step one. Each side of the roof can exert a force that is at most well, to find this force, we have to use the shear modulus. The shear modulus tells us what the ultimate strength of our object is, of the beam. So the ultimate strength of the object given by this quantity is equal to force divided by area. So we know what G is and we know what area is so we can solve for the force. Force is equal to G times A. So A is simply 0.1 meter times 0.15 meters. That's the area of our beam, the cross-sectional area of the beam. And we take that and multiply it by the shear modulus and we get 75,000 newtons. So each one of these forces can be a maximum of 75,000 newtons. If the force is higher, the beam will break under shear stress. Now, let's go to step two. In step two, we're going to use the fact that our beam is in static equilibrium. That means the net torque acting on the beam is zero. So, we choose our axis of rotation to be the left edge of the beam. So that means we have one, two, three, four torques that are created. We choose going counterclockwise to be positive and clockwise to be negative. So that means we have three negative torques and one positive torque. So recall that torque is equal to the force multiplied by the lever arm. So for the first positive torque, it's force, this blue force, multiplied by the lever arm of 3.3 meters. Then we get minus the force. So we're looking at this force now. Force B multiplied by 2.2 meters. Next, we look at the gravitational force. Mg multiplied by half of the beam's length. 
so 1.65 meters. And finally, we look at this force, force B multiplied by 1.1 meters. So we take this equation and we solve for force B because this is what we want to find. We see that force B due to one of these legs is equal to 3.3F, so the blue F, minus 1.65 times M times G divided by 3.3. So this blue force we found to be 75,000 newtons. So we plug that value in. The mass is 30 kilograms and the G is 9.8 meters per second squared. We plug those quantities in, divide by 3.3 and we get 74,853 is the maximum quantity of this purple force that our object can hold. And because we have two forces, two such forces that our beam can uh, support, that means to find the mass, we take this quantity, multiply it by 2, and divide that by G, and we find the total mass our beam can support is 15,000, approximately 15,300 kilograms.